you'd like to turn to the book of James and chapter 5, it's page 2002, James chapter 5. Jesus said about the last days, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Endurance is an important matter, especially in the last days. And so we read in James chapter 5, reading from verse 7. It says, Be patient therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. You too, be patient, strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brethren, against one another that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door as an example, brethren, of the, the suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. <coughs> Behold, we count those blessed who endured. You've heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. The prophets are an example to us of endurance for the last days. We're encouraged not to grumble and complain to one another in the last days. We need, we need fellowship that will encourage and stir one another up. Amen? Amen. And grumbling doesn't help, does it? So let's seek to encourage and stir one another up and not to complain, James says, as we fast approach the return of Jesus. But Job is our chief example of endurance. He who endures to the end shall be saved. And I want us to think a little bit about Job this morning. <coughs> and specifically we're told in James about the outcome of the Lord's dealing. So let's start at the end of Job and turn to chapter 42. Job 42, page 872. Job comes before Psalms. Hope you're familiar with something of the flow of the book of Job. Because we can't read 42 chapters. But the end of Job, we read these few verses at the beginning of chapter 42. <coughs> then Job answered the Lord. The Lord has addressed Job regarding his creation and the wonders of it. And asked Job, do you, do you know why I did everything the way I did it? Why I made hippopotamuses and ostriches as daft as they are? Do, do, do you understand why I did it like that? Do you understand how everything fits together? Do you get DNA? Do you get um, all these things? Do you understand it all, Job? And Job's got his hand over his mouth because he doesn't understand it all he doesn't know why God put so many stars in the sky he doesn't understand all the galaxies and how they're all shaped and things he doesn't get it all Job I don't know if you do well Job answered the Lord and said I, I know that thou canst do all things that no purpose of thine can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I've declared that which I did not understand. I don't know how everything fits together. I don't know how you've planned everything. I don't know how everything works out. I don't understand the whole counsel and purpose and plan of God. I don't understand it. 
So I really should shut up. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear now, and I'll speak. I've asked thee, and do thou instruct me. I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees thee. Therefore, I retract and I repent in dust and ashes. You know the best thing <coughs> for us to do when we find ourselves mourning and grumbling? Yeah. Repent in dust and ashes. Because hmm? we don't understand God's plan, do we? We do need to believe that God causes all things to work for, for good. And we need to put our hand over our mouth and say, Oi, shut up. And be thankful. And praise Him. And thank Him. And honour Him and glorify Him. Because He's a wonderful God. Amen? Amen. And I want us to think a little bit about some of the lessons in Job. You know, <clears throat> there are three things. Job, <clears throat> God let the enemy at him, didn't he? God actually held this man up before the enemy, before Lucifer, and said, Have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him. I wonder if God's doing that <clears throat> today. Because he's still there, you know, he's still presenting himself before the sons of God. He's still in the, the, is God holding you up and saying, have, have you ever looked at this one? What a wonderful servant. Do you want to have a go at him or her? See how far you get with this one? Well, the devil has a go, doesn't he? And how does he have a go? Well, first of all, he starts with his family. I don't suppose you can see the devil having a go in your family. No, he, he, he's just the same, dear friends. He tries to copy God. He says he likes to think he's the same yesterday, today and forever. Well, he, he's always been a liar and a murderer. He's never going to change that. And he has a go at Job's family and he's probably having a go at yours as well. Because if you are living godly in Christ Jesus, if you are denying yourself, you're not bothered what he does with you, but you are bothered when he attacks those that you love, aren't you? The, the enemy knows how to get to us, you know. And that's what he does. That's what he does with Job. And then he has a go with his health. Can't see anybody covered with boils, but... He has a go with his health. Keeps him awake at night with terrifying dreams. I mean, the devil really puts this man through it. And he's our example of how to endure. And God never tells him what he's doing. We got the end of the book. We read the whole thing. We get a glimpse into what was happening at the beginning when the, uh, the, the devil was appearing before God and, and how God had his hand upon the whole thing. But Job didn't. God kept silent. He trusted this man that even though the man felt like he, God was treating him like a dartboard, God, God knew he would still praise him. What an amazing man Job was. Hmm? And he's our example for the last days, dear friends. And I want us to think a little bit about that. <clears throat> we know very little, don't we? That's Job's lesson at the end. Hmm? Psalm 139. We're living in days, dear friends, when, when Babylon's flexing its muscles, isn't it? 
when all of mankind is coming together and we're starting to speak the same language and God's saying whoa nothing's going to be too much for them look what they're doing look what they're playing around with things that I should be in control of the weather they're messing about with the weather they think they're going to start controlling the weather they're, they're messing about with all kinds of things now they, they just press a little thing and then they can all talk the same language nothing's going to be impossible I'm going to have to step in God's going to have to step in soon dear friends and put an end to it all well Psalm 139 David says this O Lord thou hast searched me and known me thou dost know when I sit down and when I rise up thou dost understand my thought from afar thou dost scrutinize my path and my lying down art intimately acquainted with all my ways even before there's a word on my tongue behold O Lord thou dost know it all you know that God knows what you're going to say before you even say it thou hast enclosed me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me such wonderful such knowledge is too wonderful for me it's too high I, I can't attend to it I can't grasp it can you grasp a God who knows everything can you grasp a God who's actually sustaining everything holding it all together despite man's attempts to mess things up God's still holding everything together and he's got all these different people with all these different plans and all these wicked schemes of waywardness going wild and God's just keeping a restraint upon it all and David says that that's beyond my comprehension well the second thing <clears throat> that we see there is God recognized uh, Job recognized the sovereignty of God dear friends God's gonna do what he's going to do whether I like it or not you know that God's going to do what God's going to do whether you like it or not and he's going to cause it all to work for good because God's got a wonderful plan for your life do you know God's got a wonderful plan for your life you know what it is He's conforming you to the image of his son. He's making you more like Jesus from the day that you surrendered your life to him. That's it. You don't always understand what God's doing. Your brain's not big enough to work it all out. But God's at work making you more like Jesus. And it's not always pleasant. But Job was a more godly man in chapter 42 than he was in chapter 1. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I want to just outline five simple truths that helped Job through all this. They're simple gospel truths. If you understand the gospel this morning, you understand these truths. And there's five of them. Turn to Job chapter 9. Job and chapter 9. God's given us <coughs> foundational doctrines, hasn't he? If we, if we get them in place there's something we can stand on there's something firm 
when everything's shaking around us, we'll be stood on solid rock. On the rock which is Christ. And there's certain simple foundational truths that we need to have fixed in our hearts. And here's one of them. Job 9 verse 2. In truth I know that this is so. How can a man be in the right before God? If one wished to dispute with him, he could not answer him once in a thousand times. Wise in heart, mighty in strength, who has defied him, God, without harm? The first simple truth is this, dear friends, as sinners, as wayward sinners, we're at enmity with God. And there's only ever going to be one loser. Saul of Tarsus was on his way with murder in his heart thinking that he was serving God and out to destroy the body of Christ. And a bright light came from heaven and he heard a voice and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the voice said this, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So why are you kicking against the gods? Why are you kicking against the pricks? Why are you fighting against God? Whenever we're outside of Christ, dear friends, we are by nature children of wrath. We're dead in our trespasses and sins. And that's how we're walking. And we are enemies of God. Until we obey the gospel and repent, turn and trust in the Saviour, the Bible says the wrath of God abides upon us. We're at enmity with our Creator. And Job's saying, who can continue on in sin and at enmity with God and not be a loser? I was a loser. I was going my own way. I was living by my own lusts and passions. I was living dead in my trespasses and sins. And God in his great mercy reached down into my life and turned me around and saved me. And if he hadn't have done, I was in the losing side. I was at enmity with my creator. And Job's saying, who isn't? There's none righteous, not even one, dear friends. We're all sinners in the hands of an angry God. Until we turn, until we repent, until we come to the foot of the cross and call upon him to be saved. Don't ever lose sight of that. Ephesians chapter 2 says, Remember, remember, that you were at that time excluded from the commonwealth of Israel. You were enemies. You were without hope and without God. Isn't that true? You know, we work with God and we forget. Job never left, lost sight of that. Different, what has this world got to offer you when you are in Christ? When you've escaped the wrath of God. When you've come out from under that cloud. 
which was the wrath of God about to consume you and you found peace with God through Jesus. How can you go back? Why would you want to? And Job's, Job's there, I, I don't know what God's doing with me. I don't know what's happening in my life, but I know this. To live outside of Him, there's only going to be one loser. It'd be me. So I'm not going to let Him go. I'm not going to let Him go. The second truth. Turn to Job chapter 30. Job chapter 30. And verse 23. Job says, I know that thou wilt bring me to death and to the house of meeting for all living. There's an appointment for each and every one of us, dear friends. It is appointed for men once to die. And after this, the judgment. Can anyone escape that time of meeting? Will we all give an account of ourselves to God? Yeah. The Bible's clear, dear friends. Revelation chapter 20 says the small and the great alike will be gathered before that great white throne. He who sits upon it who is holy and righteous and true and books will be opened and another book, the book of life. And if anyone's name's not found written in the Lamb's book of life, if anyone is not belonging to Jesus Christ, what? They'll give an account for their deeds done in the body. What, everyone? <coughs> everyone. I know. Thou wilt bring me to death in the <coughs> house of meeting for all living. Everybody. Everyone's going to stand before Almighty God. Everyone's going to give an account. No one can escape. That time. And that day. The third thing. <clears throat> Job chapter 13. Job chapter 13, verse 15. Job says, Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Nevertheless, I'll argue my ways before him. This also will be my salvation, for a godless man may not come before his presence. Listen carefully to my speech. Let my declaration fill your heart. Ears. Behold now, I have prepared my case, I know that I will be vindicated. What does he know? He's trusting in God. Does he think he's perfect? No. But no matter what happens, he is going to hope in the Lord. He's going to trust in the Lord. He's going to cling to the Lord. Can you say that this morning? Though he slay me, I'm not going to let go of him. No matter what happens in my life, I am going to cleave to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my hope. He's my saviour. He's my deliverer. I'm trusting 
in him. And that's my security. That's my security. Because I hope in him. He'll vindicate me. That's my assurance. Turn to Hebrews chapter 10. We sing blessed assurance, don't we? What a beautiful hymn. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretest of glory divine. <clears throat> if you've been witnessing for any amount of time, I'm sure you've come across <coughs> people who say, well, you can't be sure. You can't say you're saved. Well, I can say I'm saved, then I will say I'm saved. But you don't know. Yes, I do. And they think that's arrogance. No, that's salvation, dear friends. <coughs> Job's saying, I've got hope. I know. I'm vindicated. I'm right with him. I know I am. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. By one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying this is the covenant that I'll make with them, after those days, says the Lord, I'll put my laws upon their heart, and upon their mind I will write them. And then he says, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. What work does the Holy Spirit do within us as believers? He regenerates us. <clears throat> he convicts us of sin, righteousness and judgment to bring us to the Saviour. When we call upon him, The new covenant is that God promises a new heart. A working within. And it's a new heart that he starts writing his law upon. Do you remember when you got saved? And you picked this book up. Maybe you'd been reading it before. And not understood very much of it. I had a Bible at the side of my bed. And I used to come in drunk and all kinds of states I used to pour in. And I used to pick up this book and I had no clue what it was saying. Didn't understand it at all. But God was working in my life and I couldn't put it down. But it didn't make any sense to me. But the night I surrendered to Jesus and asked him to come and change my life. Forgive my sin and turn me around. The next day, when I started to read this book, it was a new book. It was a new book. It started to come alive. It started to mean something. It was like God speaking to me. I, I didn't want to put it down. I wanted to consume it more and more. God gave me a love for the Bible. Because the, the author was speaking to my heart. That was a witness of the Holy Spirit, dear friends. And what else does it say? We have a witness of the Holy Spirit, dear friends, that our iniquities, our sins, he remembers no more. The devil likes to remind us of them, doesn't he? He doesn't just accuse us before God in heaven. He accuses us down here. You miserable son. So I know what you used to do. I know what you like. And he'll reel it all off to you.
But I have a witness of the Holy Spirit, dear friends, that God remembers that no more. I am forgiven. That burden was lifted at Calvary. We know John Bunyan's story. He goes with a big thing on his back, doesn't he? He manages to get up the narrow way to the cross and, and, and he gets rid of that burden. It's taken away at Calvary because Jesus died once and for all for our sins and the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God and that he remembers our sins no more even if we can remember them. We're forgiven. <coughs> and I know I'm forgiven. I have a blessed assurance because Jesus is mine. Galatians chapter 4. <clears throat> I'd heard the Lord's Prayer before. Don't know if you had. I wasn't well churched. Didn't really have a Christian background in that sense. But I'd heard the Lord's Prayer. I knew it. <clears throat> I think our generation, we used to learn it in school and crazy things like that. Hmm? So I knew that Jesus had taught the disciples that they were to pray, Our Father who art in heaven. And I think I'd probably prayed that along the way somewhere. But it didn't mean anything. I didn't think God was my father. It didn't really mean anything to me when I said it. But when I was born again, when I called upon Jesus, when he forgave me of my sin and changed me, then all of a sudden it, begin, it began to mean something, that he was my father in heaven. Galatians 4. <clears throat> I'll read from verse 4. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman under the law, in order that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts crying Abba Father can you say that this morning yes. Abba Father Heavenly Father I know you're there I know I belong to you I don't always feel like a good son but I know you're the perfect father I know I know that I belong to you and I'm now a son of the living God because I put my trust in Jesus Christ. We have a witness, dear friends, of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. Crying from within us. Abba, Father. Turn to Job chapter 19. Here's the fourth thing. We're born again to... A living hope, dear friends. We're born again to a living hope. What's the next thing that keeps this man going? <clears throat> Job 19. Verse 25. If you don't know much of <clears throat> the book of Job, you probably know these verses. Job says, As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, he will take his stand on the earth. 
even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh I shall see God, whom I myself shall behold, whom my eyes shall see, and not another, my heart faints within me. I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last, He will take his stand on the earth. You say, you mean Jesus is coming back to this earth? And he's going to restore Israel? And he's going to keep all the promises that he made to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? And he's going to change this world? That this fallen, cursed nature which is groaning in travail is all going to be transformed are you trying to tell me that the lion is going to lie down with that a young child's going to have to, going to be able to play with snakes that'll be fun in Africa won't it they'll be rejoicing in Africa over that one Yeah, come here, that big one. Eh? Let me smack you around a bit. You mean God's going to do all that? And Jesus is going to sit on the throne of David? And reign over all the nations with a rod of iron? That righteousness will rule over all the earth? And the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You mean that, Job? I mean that. I mean that. But you're covered in boils, I don't care. The devil's given you a battering job, I don't care. I've got a glorious hope. I'm going to reign with Christ. For a thousand years. And then there's going to be new heavens and a new earth. Where righteousness dwell. There's a beautiful city coming down. And God's got me a massive house in that. So you're going to put up with a bit of suffering? You don't understand what God's doing with you. No I don't. But I know that my Redeemer lives. I know there's a resurrection and yet from my flesh shall I see God. I'm going to see him in all his fullness. I'm going to see Jesus like John saw him. Eyes of flashing fire, feet like burnished bronze and my eyes won't get burnt out. I'll be able to see him in all his beauty, the king in all his beauty. And that's going to keep you going Job. I'm going to endure on that one. Amen. 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 1 John chapter 3. Let's read it in scripture rather than me. 1 <clears throat> John chapter 3. See how great a love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Are hey, you son of God this morning? You got that blessed assurance? You know that your father is, is in heaven? Such we are. For this reason the world does not know us, because it didn't know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it does not appear as yet what we shall be. We know that when he appears we shall be like him, because... We shall see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. Why do we live right? As, as we see the day fast approaching. Why are we careful to keep our garments right? Why are we looking to clean up our lives and be found without shame at his coming why? because we've got a glorious hope dear friends 
in the resurrection. Number five, if you've been counting. Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23. I read from verse 8. Job says, Behold, I go forward, but, but he's not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he acts on the left, I cannot behold him. He turns on the right, I cannot see him. I don't know what God's doing with me. I don't know where God is in this. My life just seems a total mess. Never been there. I don't, I don't know what God's doing. I don't know whether he's behind me, in front of me. I don't know where he is. Well, you don't. Job, <laughs> you don't know why he made ostriches. You don't know any of it, do you, Job? No. So I'm going to repent in dust and ashes. And I'm just going to trust him instead. But he knows the way I take. When he's tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I, I, I don't know what he's doing. I, I, I don't understand everything that's going on. But I know him. And I know that he knows that I love him. Peter, Satan, has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. <clears throat> You're going to run for your life when they come to arrest me. Not me, Lord. All of you. Strike the shepherd, the sheep will be scattered. You're all running for it. Not I, Lord. Three times he denies him. And the Lord comes to him. And Peter says, you know that I love you, Lord. I messed up. Not once, not twice, three times. But you know that I love you. Lord, I don't get everything right. I don't always know where you are. I don't always understand what's happening. I know my life's not always perfect. But you know that I love you. Can you say that this morning? You know that I'm yours. You know that I've trusted you. You know that I belong to you. This is eternal life. Hallelujah. That you know the only true God. Do you know him this morning? Do you know him? Are you trusting him? Do you see that you've got a glorious inheritance in him? Are you thankful? that you've got a blessed assurance of his working in your life this morning. You might have lost it. You might be forgetting it. It might seem a little bit distant in the past, but you know it's there. You know you trust him. You know that you love him. Even if it's very badly sometimes. Most importantly, he knows, dear friends. He knows. Job never left, lost sight of these things. He was a sinner. He was an enemy. He would have been destined to be gathered with all the living. To face judgment for his sin. But God had done a work in his life. And he belonged to him. And he's, Are you there this morning? Because it's these things, dear friends, that we need to lay hold of and not let go of. Because Job, Job, in all that he went through, never let go of these things. I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, he shall stand upon the earth. And in my flesh I shall see God. I myself am not another. And he knows I love him. 
he knows I've given myself to him. Praise God. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for these simple truths, Lord, that we've just reminded ourselves of this morning. Uh, and Father, we thank you that we can see some of these things through this, this dear uh, saint, Lord, this dear example. Lord, we're, we're, none of us have gone through what he went through. And you've held him up for us. You let him go through all of that. All that he did, Lord, to show, Lord, that we can, we, we can rest in you and not let go of you no matter what because of this great salvation. Lord, would you seal these things in our hearts for these coming days, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.